I begin in the name of Allah, most compassionate, most merciful. Allah's peace and blessing be upon all his prophets, from Prophet Adam <coughs> to Noah to Ibrahim, Moses and Jesus. And we are starting a bit late because I'm still waiting for a few speakers. Uh, why, why did we meet here today? Very simple thing. If you come to my class, there is no preaching in the class. I have made it a rule that nobody will pass a book to anybody. And I have to told them not to pass any cassette to anybody. Just give their smile and tell them what they need, that's all. Because I trust all of you to be intelligent. And uh, if you have any question, you can ask me. The only thing that we offer here is love. What it means now, Quran says, those who are believers, love for the sake of Allah. And love for the sake of Allah is one way love, it's more pure love, it's more sincere love. And when somebody comes to my class, a lot of person took shahada, they witnessed, they said only one thing when we came to the class, we found the love in the class. So the only thing I can offer to you, the class can offer you the love for the sake of Allah. No preaching and no passing of the books and no tapes at all. If you have a question, you ask us. The second thing is that, uh, that uh, the journey starts with my dinner at home and there we break the ice to find who you, you, who you are. <coughs> First of all, I thank Allah to have given me this chance to be part of this class for the last 21 years. This is blessing of Allah upon me. After thanking Allah, I will have to thank my wife. For the last 21 years, Aliyah Kazi did not have <coughs> any engagement except coming to this class every Sunday, making preparation for the refreshment and taking care of the cleaning. <coughs> not a single day not a single week goes in our life when Aliyah will not prepare any dish for any person. And without her support, it was not possible for me to have done the job. And I pray to Allah that at least you can get a wife like Aliyah, hmm. or better than that. I don't know. <coughs> okay, okay, we will begin our program by the recitation of Quran. Brother Ross will read the recitation of Quran, and then every one of you <coughs> will listen to their story that how did they jump the fence and what they found after jumping the fence. So, Brother Ross, come here and start reading the Fatiha and begin the program. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Marquee I'm doing this for Dr. Kazi, and I hope it pleases Allah at the same time. Um, I uh, I converted. I like to start out saying, "In the name of Allah, um, most gracious, most merciful." But I converted uh, last December to Islam, and my journey began, I guess, about three years ago. And. Uh, In a nutshell, I went through some situations that were, that kind of changed my life physically and, and changed my life mentally through work and through um, some accidents, some car wrecks I had. So, after I realized that I would die eventually, uh, I started studying a lot and I started working a lot. And I, I, I basically concentrated most of my time working and studying. And I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations and 
and after I read it, I had a concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His oneness and how that oneness sort of changed in the New Testament from after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how that oneness sort of changed. And I was convinced of, uh, of that oneness. And I went to a Catholic teacher and the Catholic teacher told me I was, I was nuts. And I needed, to re I needed to study some more. So I studied some more and I almost started joining the Catholic Church. And I, I realized that uh, at some point there, Allah led me to read his book. And I, when I read the book, it did feel like the last testament. So I, I, I did convert. And it's been a long journey and I'm happy to be here, to be honest. And, and the improvements I've made, and I feel in my personality, I think I'm more can attest to that, that it, the, the religion does work, and it's simple, objective. They're ob almost like objective miracles, you could call them. The Quran is an objective miracle. And it's nice. It's nice to have healing. It's nice to be able to be a part of a community that you have support. And I'm very, I'm very thankful. There's one other thing I wanted to mention, and that is, I felt like the story you hear of the of the Israelis coming out of out of uh, Egypt and into the desert and into the Promised Land. I feel like that story is you can see that through history, and you can see that through biographies. That same story, and it, the story might repeat, and we never really know where we are in that in that you know. I kind of feel like I'm in the desert, uh, um, but you know we really don't know where we are. I feel that story applies to everyone. Everyone has a relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and we got to kind of figure out where we are and are we under the thumb of the Egyptians? Are we in the desert? Um, and sort of work on our relationship where we can eventually make it to the Promised Land here and and in, in Jemna. But uh, I hope this encourages people. I, I really want people to, if any of you take anything out of this message of me, uh, if you can get anything from this, then it would be to, to serve mankind and to improve yourself and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That make the journey easy for us and then you have brought blessing to all of us. I'm going to call a person who will read for Quran and then he will tell you a story of becoming Muslim that is the most unique that I've heard in my life and then that's Brother Rick is here. And then just be very, I don't think you don't have to be too modest here, you just be, I, I have never heard a story for a person to be Muslim like that in my life. Read the Quran first, okay, then listen to this, this Quran Masha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على سرات مستقيم تنزل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوم ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إن جعلنا في أعناكهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمهون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون 
إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ مِنَّا تَبَعَ ذِكْرَ وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبَ فَبَشِرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَنَكْتُبُ مَا كَدَّمُوا وَأَثَارَهُمْ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ صدق الله العظيم Can you stand up and tell your journey to Islam what happened with the miracle that happened in your life? Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, uh, kind of kind of in, in, in two parts, so I guess you could say when I grew up as a as a teenager growing up, um, I was very much into science and I thought science was the way to find the truth. so I, I was pretty much considered myself an atheist, I think through as, as, as a teenager. but um, when I was in college in, in Chicago, freshman year in college, I had um, Allah just gave me this like unbelievable experience one night in the springtime, almost the end of uh, freshman year. Um, uh, my dorm was on the lake shore in Chicago, uh, on Lake Michigan, and a storm had just passed over the city, like big storm clouds, and then the, it started raining out over the Lake Michigan and like a few miles out and you couldn't hear anything but you could see like lightning. You couldn't hear the thunder but you could see just at sunset, right at sunset, you could see all this lightning coming down. It was like, like static electricity or something when you pull a uh, sweater off, your, uh, off, off yourself. But it was like, so there's this fantastic lightning show, like this incredible natural event. And all these people, hundreds of people came out to the lake shore and we were all watching it and just happened to be there. and. Um, Somewhere in that, in that time watching this and saying hi and talking to other people around me, all of a sudden, you know, Allah gave me this very special experience of, like, I knew that there was a creator. I knew that there was God. And he was controlling this and he was controlling the universe and he was controlling the, uh, everything that happened. And uh, that he was the creator, he was the almighty, he was the, the fashioner of things. And... So that, that was the first really powerful experience, changed, changed my life. And um, I started looking into studying religions after that and uh, reading the Bible, I went back to like Genesis and said, oh, oh my God, this is like, it meant something to me where it didn't mean anything before, you know. And, um, and so I learned a lot about a, a lot of different uh, world religions and, and including reading Quran and stuff and over the years. And, um, and then, so then, it was 1997, so like 17 years later, when I was, um, uh, I received this book from my mom, and it was a book of uh, Islamic teachings by a, a, a sheikh from uh, Al-Quds, from Jerusalem, and uh, in, in English, his, his uh, teachings in English, and um, 1990, 1996, and I, um, read this, this book and it really made an impact on me. It's like, I, I want to meet this man if he comes to the United States. And he came to the United States the next year. And uh, be, me and both me and my mother went to, to meet him. He was uh, someone who my mom's, a friend of my mom's had met. And uh, through him, she found out all the information. We went to meet him in, in um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and at, at my, uh, her friend's house. And um, uh, and it was just an extraordinary weekend. He is a, um, he's a sheikh. He's uh, very knowledgeable and with a really good gift for, for teaching about Islam to Americans, uh, I just found. He, he just reaches people on a very sort of emotional and his, his teachings are very sort of poetic. And um, just out of the end of this weekend with him, uh, not only did, did my mom really embrace Islam, but I, I experienced such like a power in the in the message of the Quran and the message of Islam that I had never never felt never 
felt in any of the other, like the, uh, you know, I'd been studying something about, about Buddhism and Christianity and Judaism and, um, and, and many other religions, Hinduism, and, um, but this just blew me away. This just like, I felt like such a power that I felt in the Quran. And, um, and that's, so that's my heart, my heart changed uh, that day, that weekend. Uh, as did as did my mom at, at 61. She uh, uh, became Muslim in her heart, and uh, we both took shahada like a couple years later. But uh, but that was that was the turning point, and um, so it was, it was an amazing experience. And it was just kind of the, it was the, so it was like the door opening up for me because it was as I'd heard later, you know, I'd I'd read the Quran and or translations of the Quran, and it really didn't hadn't, hadn't impacted me that much. But starting then, it was. Um, slowly like it, it just really got deeper and deeper prefer for me when I would read the Quran both hear like recitations of it in Arabic as well as reading English translation there was somebody told me along the line that you know the Quran um, the, the more Iman you have the more Iman the more faith you have the more you open up your heart to the Quran the more that it gives you and I found that it almost sounded like a catch-22 at the beginning well, how do I how do I surrender myself to this if I'm if uh, if I don't know, you know? And it was, it was a matter of faith about like plunging in with my heart and and feeling, uh, and then I, all of a sudden the, the meanings, you know, the deeper meaning of the Quran really uh, slowly. Every, every time I read it, it just became deeper and deeper for me. And uh, Alhamdulillah, that was uh, 17 years ago. And uh, uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, I first walked in the door of Eastside Masjid uh, almost 20 years ago. I had been studying Middle Eastern affairs for quite some time and uh, Islamic affairs too, um, pretty much just as an academic subject. And I thought I understood what was happening. You know, I was a little smart. Uh, then I started reading the Quran in Arabic. Um, I, that was actually before I even walked in the door. Um, I had read the Quran before in English. Didn't make a lot of sense to me in English. It was just a dry subject. But the fact is, once I started reading Al Quran Al Karim Bil Arabiya, I was stunned. I realized suddenly that I didn't understand a thing before I had done that. It was like a diamond. It was a profound transformation. And I've been reading the Quran in Arabic ever since, almost every day. I'm sorry to admit, some days I miss it. But I really try to struggle for a half hour to an hour every single day to read the Quran in Arabic. Uh, I'm not quite sure what else to say about that. Obviously, it's a very personal thing. Um, it's not my usual. Um, uh, in my study of the Quran, particularly in the earlier verses, um, I think that the meter and the rhythm of the Quran are truly amazing, really something to behold. I think there's mysteries there, and I hope to get to the point where my command of the subject is sufficient that I can comprehend it better. Uh, I think that the meters, as Dr. Kazi alludes to, um, lead to, they have not just rhymes upon an initial level, but there's higher levels of rhyming and coordination behind them that I am struggling to, to comprehend to get to. It's going to take a little time because admittedly Arabic is not an easy language, particularly for Americans. Um, I'm not quite sure what else to say except that um, I was not a believer at first. Once I started reading the Quran, I became a believer and I walked in the door. I didn't know anybody here whatsoever. I wasn't introduced. I just walked in the door and said, I really like what I've been reading in Arabic and I'd like to start participating. I guess I've been a little embarrassed ever since. Uh, uh, but as I've remarked to Dr. Kazi, I'm always amazed at how engaging and accepting and friendly everybody has been at the East Side Masjid for the 20 years that I've been coming here. Assalamu alaikum. Um, uh, my name is Alex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, the way I came to Islam is, uh, well, to begin with, I've, I've always been a Muslim. I just never knew it. Uh, my wife, you know, Vajin, she helped me uh, get to where I am now. Uh, like, I used to be Christian, and... Um, Oh, I wasn't a very good person, but whenever I came to Islam, it changed me and it made me a better person. It made me a better me. And uh, I don't know, the way I believed in it is because um, I went to the mosque one time. It was like uh, during, what is it? During Maghreb prayer. And whenever I stepped foot in there, uh, it was just beautiful. Um, Whenever they did the call of prayer, it just it made me cry while I was in there, and I never felt like something like that before in my life. So from that moment, I don't know, I just I never felt that feeling before. And um, they they gave me a book like uh, it was Miracles of the Quran, and that's what I started reading. And it, whenever I read everything in there, it just there was like no way I could believe that. I don't know, like, I, I knew that was the truth from what I was reading. That I knew that the Quran couldn't be written by man because only God would know the things that is written in the Quran. And um, ever since that day, I just would always look at YouTube videos and learn more and more each and every day. And it just changed me so much. It's made me a better person. And I thank Allah so much for, for uh, bringing my wife into my life. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I am now and um, yeah I'm just proud to be a Muslim and uh, I love all my Muslim brothers and sisters Bismillah uh, Rahman Nirahim Alhamdulillah Rahman Nirahim Alhamdulillah Rahman Nirahim Maliki Al-Madin Ayaka Nabudu Wa Ayaka Nasta'in Adina Sirata Mustakim, Sirata Ladina Anam Talahim, Kaira Makdubi Alahim Wala Dali. Okay. Your journey to Islam. Huh? Your journey to Islam. Uh, okay. Uh, well, how I got to be a Muslim, how I got to be a Muslim is that uh, I had been talking uh, with a friend for a while who was a Muslim, and um, this person was always sharing with me about praying and how much it meant to this person and um, I didn't really understand you know the big deal about it and, um, you know and why somebody would get up in the middle of the night and pray and get up early in the morning and pray and you know uh, you know five six times a day and why they look forward to doing that so um, but I was curious I wasn't objecting to it so for I looked online, I found, you know, you can find everything online nowadays, but uh, I looked online and found an instructions on how to do Salat, and um, so I printed it out, and, um, you know, I just followed the instructions and, you know, did the Raku and Sajud and everything, and um, just from that very first time of trying Salat, uh, I just felt so much peace, and I just felt like there's really, really something to this. And um, you know, from from that, I knew there um, there was something there for me. And so, you know, I, I looked around and I um, I found out about Dr. Kazi's class. And you know, when I went there the first first time I went to the class, um, you know, I knew that this was these are the people I wanted to be with. And um, you know, this was this was just right for me. And this was the truth. So. You know, I took Shahada at the end of my very first class with Dr. Kazi. And, um, you know, it's been, that was four years ago, and it's kind of been an adventure ever since then. And, um, you know, I got married in April uh, to my wife. And, um, you know, and so the miracles have kept opening up, and she might be mad that I'm telling everybody, but, uh, you know, we're expecting our first child in February, so. Uh, you know, it's like the miracles keep coming, so, you know, all of that's out of taking my shahada four years ago, and so, you know, alhamdulillah for 
for everything. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Um, I took my Shahada this year in May of 2004 and pretty much took it after the second time I went to Jumar. Knew I was ready. Came from a Christian background. Pretty much had a lot of different things going on in my life. So searching, trying to see, you know, where I needed to be, what I needed to do. And this dean was pretty much just brought to me. After that, just basically looking into it online, how to make slot, how to pray, how to do everything. Um, and just being blessed with a lot of stuff, marriage, family, and everything has been going good since then. So I'm just blessed. Thank you. alaikum. Shadow and Layla Haila La, Wadu La Shurikala, Wa Shadow Anna Muhammad on Abduhu or Asu. Uh, my journey to Islam is like a two part, like the brother. Uh, Islam was introduced to me in a very dark place. And that place, like Prophet Yusuf, was prison. And I was a, a teenager at the time, uh, soul searching, studying Christianity and trying to find my way as well. Allah had been blessing me to go through certain stages in my life. Uh, no, no eating of the pork, uh, praying directly to Allah. Allah blessed me to learn these things through studying through the Bible. And it, it's funny, I never heard about Muslim and what is a Muslim till one day uh, we're going to eat in the system and they were serving pork this day. And by me not eating pork, I chose to get at the end of the line because I was like, well, it's just vegetables. For me, there's no need to run through the line. <laughs> and as I was at the end of the line, two brothers were behind me and they noticed that I told them uh, I don't eat pork. And they asked me, they was like, brother, are you Muslim? I was like, I don't understand what is, what is a Muslim. And they was like, well, why you don't eat pork? I said, because they say don't eat it in the Bible. And they say, you Muslim and you just don't know. <laughs> and it, it just so happened that these brothers were on the same dorm as I was on. And they gave me some literature on Ahmed Didat, uh, Christ in Islam, Desert Storm, and I was blew away, you know. I, I locked myself in my cell, it was like my cave, you know, start reading lots of literature, and I took Shahada, and I was shipped out uh, a few months after taking Shahada. So I was a new Muslim, and along that journey, I was still struggling with certain things, which brings me to the second part. Uh, in Islam, it's, it's important that we have a, a nice foundation, firm foundation, because you can get certain teachings that'll take you yonder way. And I, I just want to take, alhamdulillah, I want to take Dr. Kazi back in the time machine to let him know that he was doing this class before he was at the mosque. He used to come into the prison system. And this is how I met Dr. Kazi in 1996, 97. He would come in and he had a class and I, he was the one that gave me my shahada publicly in 1996 and from his teachings you know it's, it's been a blessing I've always had love in my heart for Dr. Kaizen and my brother and his sister because he blessed us the same way he's always been a blessing to the class even today it's like he taught us in one of his classes, he's always as good and as better. It's not always right and wrong. It's good and as better. And he's lived true to that, alhamdulillah, because the teachings have gotten better. Every time you step in his class, it's like they've gotten better, but he keeps it focusing on point. 
So I thank Allah for brothers like Dr. Kaizen for having the heart to come and teach Islam in a system that is shunned upon and looked down upon. And that helped me a lot. And I, I, I don't only share this feeling myself. I can honestly say that other brothers that have taken a shahada under his guidance feel the same way because we always revert back to your teachings. You know, we, we keep them and we go over them. And, and it's alhamdulillah, you know, that we have teachers like him, which leads me to the last thing to my fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. We have a duty, you know. Their brothers and sisters like I was walking around that have Muslim heart, but they don't understand Islam because they've been, been given a distorted viewpoint of what Islam really is and what it represents. And when Allah bless us to be in the presence of these brothers and sisters that has been getting misguidance, it's our duty to stand up and give them the truth and stand out for justice the same way Dr. Kaiser has been giving us the truth and standing out for justice. And I, and I love him for that, and I love all my brothers and sisters of faith. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi My name's Kevin Marshall, but I'll, uh, I'll start properly the way I was taught by my teachers. Uh, it's an attention for learning and teaching, so I know we're all here to learn a little bit and to teach a little bit, the little bit that we do now. So I'll say it in Arabic. I really don't know it that well in English, but I know more so in Arabic, so. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadu wa ala alihi wa sahbihi salam. In the way to ta'alama wa ta'alim, wa tadakura wa tadkir, wa naf'a wa lintifa'a, wa lifada wa istifada wa al-hatha ala tamasuk bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi wa dua ila al-huda wa dalala ala al-khayri. وبدي غاء وجه الله وما رضاته وكربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى. So this is a reminder for us why we learn, why we teach. So I just had a few quick points that my wife and I uh, were reflecting on after we were invited to this class. But we're both converts of several years. I think seven or eight years between both of us. And uh, just a few things. Um, one thing is that all of us here who are Muslim chose to practice Islam. What I mean by that is, is not just the people who came from Christian backgrounds or Jewish backgrounds or Hindu backgrounds or atheist backgrounds. It's people that were born Muslim who can be not praying, but they decided to come here and have probably made Salatul Duhur, right? Or they're going to after they eat, inshallah. If you can stay awake after eating, I have a hard time myself. But uh, we're all choosing to practice Islam. so I just, just, let's just all be mindful of that, right? And so it's, uh, there's nothing really that spectacular to me about people choosing to become Muslim who are from outside Islamic backgrounds. What's more surprising and spectacular to me is people from Muslim countries, Muslim backgrounds that come here to a land that uh, can be uh, disjoint, can have you just going to bed, like the prophet said, going to bed confused. You woke up a believer, you, you, go, to, you go to bed uh, confused. So I'm more impressed with people that uh, mashallah, children. Uh, I'm more so uh, impressed with people that stay on the dean that are from backgrounds and they're challenged in their iman or challenged in their practice, but alhamdulillah, they uh, choose to remain Muslims. Okay, so that was just the first thing. Uh, second thing is, I just wanted to say something uh, a little bit about upward development after conversion. So I've been Muslim for four and a half years. I think someone, thank you so much. Uh, I've been Muslim for four and a half years, and um, uh, one sheikh, an American sheikh, I'm not going to say his name, but one thing that he shared one time, it was a profound statement. He goes, all the pro what's, what's one of the prophet, or which, I'm sorry, which one of the companions, uh, disciples of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which one of them was born Muslim? Huh? None, right. They're all what? They're all converts. SubhanAllah. They're all converts to Islam. Which brings me to our next point, is that they themselves really, really desired and expected greatness out of themselves, because they knew the greatness of the message, because the bearer of the message was right in front of them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
and they took it upon themselves to be very serious about understanding their religion in a deep way, practicing it with sincerity, uh, being uh, advancing in their spiritual practice and understanding. And so that's part, inshallah, what made these uh, men and women so great was that they were concerned with their development in the deen, development as humans and becoming full human beings that were the greatest people to ever walk the face of the earth besides the prophet and the prophets of the Islam, peace upon them all. So, um, just rounding out that point, and I have one last one after this, was it's just, it's really, in my experience of being Muslim over several years um, and being exposed to different flavors of Islam and, different, and uh, different flavors of Islam, is to understand that this deen is so diverse. It's, it's expansive, it's, a, it's like a universe. And the prophet himself is a, is a universe, because all the prophets, all, it, it's, it's through him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, it's, I liken it to this. If, if, the deen, if, if the deen and the benefits of this religion were like, if you were to put it like a location on the map, like Katy, for instance, oh, like, let's just say the deen's Katy. Is there one way to get to Katy? There's several ways, right? <coughs> So this dean's a lot like that. You might be, you know, you might just take the straight shot I-10 out there. You might take 59 to Highway 6 to wrap around, go that way. But each one of those several ways that are valid ways to get to the religion that Allah has proclaimed as the best religion for, for mankind, is there's several ways to do it and there's several lanes in each way. So like if you're going on I-10, I don't know if it's like eight lanes now or something like that. There's different lanes, so everyone's in a different lane. And so my advice, if I can give any kind of advice to people who have been Muslim uh, uh, their whole lives, <laughs> or uh, le uh, in a shorter time than me, would be there's different lanes. And so um, let's just keep that in mind. And uh, you know, if there's a new brother or sister praying in a masjid, if you're that new brother or sister praying in a masjid, and someone comes up to you and they say, it's not that way, it's this way. Understand that they've probably been taught a certain way that's a perfectly fine and valid way and you probably in your lane. So stay in your lane and recognize that other people have lanes too. And alhamdulillah, we all, we're all trying to get to the same destination. Destination and our brothers and sisters uh, of different faith backgrounds, you're also trying to get to the same destination. And so alhamdulillah, um, we're all praise and thanks and glory to God. And uh, thank you so much for inviting us. Okay. Hi, um, my name is Kylie. I thought that he was going to forget about us, I was hoping, because I'm not really a big public speaker. Um, so anything good that comes out of this obviously isn't from me. Um, so my journey to Islam, I guess, started before I even kind of realized it with an introductory class like at college, right, um, talking about art and architecture. So even just looking at the art and the architecture and seeing how faith just bleeds into everything in the Islamic culture just really got me interested in um, the faith. Um, so then the next year I met ooh, my now husband um, while he was studying here and teaching Arabic at my college. Um, and I think that um, <clears throat> my, my path towards Islam started out with kind of trying to search out my background of Christianity and comparing with him. I think a lot of like things that I learned came from, hey, but we learned it this way, how is it to you? Can we read these things together and compare and see what, hap like, see what comes of it? And what I began to find in like a religion that I was brought up in and didn't really know very well, um, was that many of these things coincided well, and the reason I don't like talking in public is because I get like choked up, right? Um, but a lot of them began to like meet in the middle. So um, I searched out online and ordered the Quran from the masjid and got like an invite to the class. So then I started coming and I went to uh, eat with Dr. Kazi and his wife at their house. Um, got introduced to, introduced to the family and it just was like a culminating experience from there. Reading, uh, while going to church, I had started going to church again um, to try to get more into this and it's like every Sunday I would go to church in the morning and then I'd come to Islam class in the afternoon. So it was kind of funny, um, a dichotomy between those, but a lot of the times it was really interesting to see how it segued into 
a bigger understanding um, and like an understanding between that interfaith uh, relationship. So <laughs> eventually I got to the point where I knew too much, I guess, to be at church. Um, so I would go on Sundays and kind of get frustrated and then come to class in the afternoon to the Islam class and be like, wow, this makes so much more sense. Or um, how did I not realize that before that like they're saying one thing and then doing another thing or like it just became very obvious to me and, and it stared me right in the face. So there was nothing else I could do but accept Islam and accept Allah as the one God, right? So it all led to this path, you know, of um, taking Shahada last year. I took it in March, I think, and then this April I got married. My husband came back to the U.S., so he's here now. And um, it's just like blessings upon blessings now that we've gotten to this, you know, now that I've come to this, like, end of the road, I guess, where they met and there was no other choice. So um, thank you, like, I thank God like every day that he's brought me out of this like, what I thought I understood to be my religion, like praying every night to God, but not really having the faith to go to church, going to church, then coming here, reading the Quran and just, you know, ending up here. So Alhamdulillah. Thank you for listening. <laughs> um, bye. Hey, uh, my name is Angela. I'm honestly not really sure where my journey started. Um, I grew up as I'm Native American, so I grew up on a reservation, um, which is probably not something that a lot of you are familiar with. Um, but we're very spiritual, so my grandparents were always talking to me about the Creator and telling me stories, um, and that's what I grew up hearing. When I was 10 years old, um, all of us Native American children got shipped out to a Catholic boarding school because they thought that that would make us more American, I guess. Um, so I spent two years in a Catholic boarding school, and none of it made any sense. And the only thing that I really learned after the two years was that I'm definitely not Catholic. <laughs> so, um, as I got older, people started asking me, they were like, so what is your religion? And I was like, well, I don't really know. You know, we're spiritual, but we don't have a name for it. It's just a way of life. It's who we are. You know, you spend your whole day in prayer. Um, the elders are always telling us that we're supposed to walk in prayer. Every step is supposed to be a prayer. Um, and as long as you're doing that, then you're living life the way that you should. But we didn't have a name for it. So it made it really confusing when people would ask, what is your religion? Um, so I started looking into other religions, and I started studying everything. Any religion that I could get information about, I was like, what is this? And eventually, I would come to a point with all of them that I was like, this just doesn't make sense. No matter how many times a day I pray, I am never going to be a god. It's not happening. <laughs> Um, they just didn't make sense. So time kept going on. Um, and after a while, um, I actually met a Muslim and we started talking. And I was like, wow, you do that? Really? Wow, so do I. And it, it just started getting to a point where I was like, you know, maybe I need to read more about this. So I went online and I started reading whatever I could. Um, and it all just made sense. Most of it was stuff that I had already heard from my grandparents. So it just seemed to make sense. So I kept reading. Um, and I went to the grocery store one day, and we had this little bin in the grocery store. Um, it was like books people would drop off, and they'd buy the books, and the money would be donated to charity. So right on the top of the stack was like all of these books about Islam. So I was like, cool, this is awesome. So I bought the whole stack of books, and I went home, and I started reading them. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this really makes sense. So then I decided that I was going to try to read the Quran. And I went ahead and I started reading it. And at first it felt a little bit weird because a lot of the stuff that I was reading was stuff that I had heard from my grandfather. So at first it was like, okay, this is, this is different. And I kept reading it and I was like, wow, um, I've been doing this my whole life and I just never knew it. Um, so I just got to a point that it just made sense. And here I am. Hmm? Um, well, I came to his class. I found it online. <laughs> I moved to Houston, and I was like, you know, I really need to do this, but I don't want to do it on my own. 
So I looked online and I found Dr. Kazi's class and um, him and his wife have been there for me every step of the way. And I thank them and I love for it very much. Hi everybody. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> uh, I'm still not loud enough, it's a microphone. Okay, so uh, I don't know what to say really, but um, I'm just really touched by Angela's story right now. <laughs> um, okay, right here? Okay. Um, I guess I came to Islam because, or um, by way of a lot of different, like, experiences. And um, some of them were good, and some of them were not so good. But um, it started when I was like a little, actually a really little kid. And uh, I don't really know what to say. So, um, I guess I started realizing that it's, um, well, when you have like an experience that's like really hard to get through, um, I think it's easier to know how to like talk to God. I think, I don't know how you guys feel about that. But for me it was like so easy. It was really easy and I didn't have a problem with it except that I didn't know anybody else who did it the way I did it. And <laughs> um, I was really different compared to everybody else I knew. And I wasn't gonna stop my way because I'm me and like, you know, I do everything Christina way. So, um, I guess, I don't really know what else. Um, oh, okay, so I went to all these different schools. I had a total of 10 moves in high school. And in that, I got to use my stock money for, <laughs> to go to um, private school. And that was really special for me because I knew I could do better. And I went to a Catholic school and, oh, I tried to be Catholic so hard because I knew what I was didn't really count because you can choose whatever you wanna be whenever you feel like it. And so I tried really hard to be Catholic and they stuck me in the back on a folding chair. I don't like folding chairs. <laughs> and, um, and they said I wasn't allowed to go do the confession because I wasn't actually uh, Catholic. But I, I don't know what the deal with that was. So I didn't get to go to the confession thing. And I'm like, okay, fine then. And I looked all into Catholicism and I'm like, this is really not for me. So I tried, um, like every time we moved, I tried a different church. And it wasn't working. It really wasn't. And I went to a Lutheran school, that was private too, and part of my education was arguing with my, like, um, not actually arguing, uh, but just having, like, heated conversation with the other students, and I'm like, no, you can't think like that because, and I would put my views into uh, the conversation, and I learned that's not really a good thing to do. But I also learned I'm not Lutheran. There's no way. And so I really tried like every church you can think of except for um, the church, of the Christian scientists. And I wasn't going to do that. So <laughs> I'm sure they're great people, but not for me. So then finally I like, came down to it again and I was about to go through my cycle where I looked and looked again and like I had been doing forever and I realized you know I can either at this point try Judaism or Islam so Judaism didn't work because I didn't know Hebrew <laughs> and I decided I'll try Islam um, and my friend's mom told me to go ahead and um, read the first part of the Quran. It was, I didn't get it. I'm like, so where's all the mystery stuff? Like, this is really straightforward and super easy. 
that's probably too easy. So it's, I don't think it's going to work. She says, well, what do you mean? It doesn't need mister. You're like looking for something to be wrong. And I guess I came to Dr. Kazu's class, and after the first class, I felt stronger immediately. Like, pretty much just seeing me for the first time, I just all of a sudden like, felt like, OK, I think I'm in the right place. And oh, another thing was uh, something I noticed with like all these churches I went to is the first commandment says there's only one God. And you shouldn't worship anybody before that one God. Right? It's like basically that's what it's saying. So like I really think that's what I was doing the whole time. And now since all that time I didn't know what I was, Dr. Kazi helped me figure out and you guys all helped me figure out. Like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely Muslim. <laughs> and that's about it. Okay, the, the only thing I would like to add here, the very first thing is that no one has taken shahada because of my lecture or because of my personality. Everyone has taken shahada because the class was there. You know? And they have told me con repeatedly that uh, they became Muslim because of the love they got from the class. And repeatedly I have told you that uh, the credit that I've got out of all these things is equally distributed in all those things who have been part of this class. I remember the hadith, the Prophet said that uh, the reward for blessing Sahada is equal to all those things upon the sun shines. So do not take it lightly. If you have been part of that, then you have received the shahada. One thing I would like to add about this little girl is that that uh, her story of shahada is very unique. That uh, she was sitting at my home, and, and I told her that you cannot be half pregnant. Just be Christian, a Muslim, a Baptist Jew, and she said, "I'm ready to take shahada." And then as uh, I was sitting here, my wife was sitting here, and I started giving her shahada. She said, look, look, look, look, what is happening to me? And the tears are starting falling, falling from her eyes, and she started crying so much that I got scared. And she said, no, no, look, look, what is happening to me? And the all, when all the tears were gone, she said, I felt that I was flying on the sky. Now, this is not the story. Next week, she comes to my class, she Dr. Kazi, I felt so good, give me shahada one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it. Now, uh, before I uh, end this class, first of all, I would like to thank all those persons who have spent so much time in bringing the food. The food is enough for here today. What is left here, take it back what you brought. But I'd like to take this a uh, few minutes to address to those persons who have not taken shahada, they are standing on the fence. As I told you before, I want you to be an honest person. If you are a pure Catholic, my love goes to you. If you are a poor, pure Baptist, my love goes to you. Be honest to yourself. Na? And then you cannot play games with God. Eh? So, and if you want to be Muslim, you be pure to be Muslim. The only thing that I would like you to think very carefully that once you want to learn something, whether it is school or college, you take a textbook, that's all, nothing else. And then ask a question, who is Rab? Rab is the one who takes care of your material needs and his spiritual needs. So the Rab has always been sending a book for you to see the guidance. Now you have two choices before you, right now is it today, you cannot write a book like Bible, you cannot write a book like Quran, so you have two choices, either to take Bible or Quran. About Bible, you should know very clearly that the Bible was revealed to Prophet Jesus, Allah's peace be upon him, in the Aramaic language. Somebody put his own words and translated it into Greek language. Somebody put his own words and translated it into Latin language. Somebody put his own word translated into English language. And as of today, there are three different sets of Bible available in market. So you can take this as a word of God, or you can choose Quran as a word of God. What is so special about the Quran is that it was the wisdom of Allah that Allah revealed the Quran to a person who was absolutely unlettered. He could not even sign his name. And look, the book that he gave to you, has more than 6,000 verses. 
and chapter 4 verse number 92 say that why do the unbeliever do not ponder on this book if it were from somebody else they could have found much discrepancy and yet they could not find any discrepancy and that is the only book that has been one book for the last 14 century encyclopedia britannica is written by 54 scholars of the top rank intellectual credentials and after 3 years the encyclopedia is revised bible has been revised countless times how could a one unlettered person write a book that does not need any revision for the last 14th century ask a question that this book came from the mind of this bedouin or from god and allah will ask you on the day of judgment i gave you mind to think it over and make a decision people say that prophet muhammad peace be upon him copied this book from the quran from bible go to go go to google.com and find out when the prophet was born the prophet was born in 570 ce put down on google the first arabic bible it came 876 bc how could the prophet copy it from arabic see these persons have no common sense and they will have to answer on the day of judgment now let's compare the bible and quran for a second okay bible have so many things that i am very sorry to say that prophet jesus did not mention this that prophet lot has sex relation with his two daughters prophet solomon have sex relation with his daughter in law you don't see any such thing in quran if the prophet would have copy from bible such thing will be there look at these stories that whatever prophet is mentioned in the quran whatever prophet is mentioned in the bible is mentioned in the quran who gave this knowledge to an unlettered person and not only that whatever stories are in the bible the quran goes to purify them let's give you some two examples bible say that uh, there was an encounter between moses and pharaoh and pharaoh got drowned that's all quran say there was an encounter between moses and pharaoh and we have preserved the body of pharaoh for the next coming generation to be a sign of allah's power and wisdom yeah, and then today you can go to egypt and see that very pharaoh who allah is talking who gave this knowledge to an unlettered prophet for those who are have not taken shahada think it very carefully and i'll tell you something another thing when you go to the western historians and when you go to the old testament new testament you will notice one thing and listen to me very carefully when they are talking of prophet moses and prophet joseph they say moses and jo- pharaoh and joseph and pharaoh let me say it again the western scholars historians books will say moses and pharaoh joseph and pharaoh the quran will say Moses and Pharaoh, Joseph and King. Historians are now finding that Joseph came 800 years before Moses, and they are correcting histories. What Prophet Muhammad gave to us? Ask a question for those who are not Muslim: that this book is from God or not? Now, if you accept this book is from God, then accept it for the love of Allah, for the love of Allah alone. for the love of allah 100 out of 100 i am not pointing my finger to anybody else but there is something very common statement in my class i am ready to shara but such a person, person is out of town he let him take come here then i'll take shara that is not love pure for the sake of allah you are contaminating it with a condition allah wants absolute love allah wants pure love allah wants uncontaminated love you take the shara for the love of allah without putting anything between you and allah and allah knows the secrets of your heart and my heart whenever you want to take shahada let it be an unconditional love for the sake of allah for the cause of allah for the love of allah a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين in the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen All praises for Allah, the Lord of the world Maliki Yawmiddin The Master of the Day of Judgment Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim The Most Merciful, the Most Compassionate Iyak and Abudu wa Iyak and Asta'een To you alone do we worship and to you alone do we ask for help Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us on the straight path. Sirat al Ladina an Amti alayhim, the path of those upon whom you've blessed. Sirat al Ladina an Amti alayhim, Ghayr al Maghdubi alayhim, Mala Dalin, and not those upon whom you have anger or who have gone astray. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and look down and then don't look towards anybody else, okay? Okay, now. Say Bismillah. Bismillah. Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. Nir Rahim. Nir Rahim. Ashhado. Ashhado. An. An. La. La. Ilaha. Ilaha. Il. Il. Lal. Lal. La. La. Ho. Ho. Vahdahu. Rahdahu. La. La. Sharika. Sharika. Lahu. Lahu. Wa. Wa. Ashhado. Ashhado. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa. Rasuluhu. Rasuluhu. You made ten out of ten in Arabic. <laughs> now, come close, Alia. This is what you said in English, okay? I know what I said. No, no, no. <laughs> I begin. I begin. In the name of. In the name of. Allah. Allah. The most merciful. The most merciful. The most compassionate. The most compassionate. Okay. I bear. I. I bear, I bear witness, witness that that there is no one, there is no one worthy of worship, worthy of worship except Allah, except Allah. He is one, he is one alone, alone and has no partner, and has no partner. I bear witness, I bear witness that that Muhammad, Muhammad, Allah peace be upon him, Allah peace be upon him is is Allah's Allah's servant, servant, and Allah's messenger, and Allah's messenger. Allah Akbar. Uh, Sister Harry, once you took Shahada, there are a few things that you should know. The very first thing is that that Allah gave you the benefit of doubt that whatever you have done in the past was because of the lack of knowledge. So Allah has taken every shortcoming and mistakes and sins from your life record. And you are as pure as the day your mother gave birth to you. So since you are spiritually pure, when you go home, take a shower to start your journey. But Allah also gave you benefit of doubt that whatever good you have done, you have done because of your good intentions. So Allah has given all the record of good deeds that you have done. So you are the richest person of all those persons sitting here and in the whole world. But few things I would like to, to, to um, listen to me very carefully. By witnessing Allah, you are saying that uh, Allah is your ilah. Uh, it means to say that Allah is closer to you than your juggler vein. Allah is your hope, Allah is your support, Allah is your comforter, Allah is your mentor. Whatever you need, you talk to Allah directly. You don't have to come to me, you don't have to go to anybody else. And being a Muslim is a relationship of secret of love between you and Allah and nobody should know that. You don't have to declare to everybody that I'm a Muslim. And the only thing is that Allah loves you 70 times more than your mother. So whenever you face any kind of misfortune, 
you can say that a mother will not do anything wrong with the children. How could the Allah do anything wrong with the children? It will be a message for you to come to back to Allah. And remember that today you have put your hands in the hands of Allah and Allah will never let you down. Someone to say something? What you took shahada? Thank you very much. What you took shahada? Right. Yes. Well, maybe next year I can um, tell a longer version, but I've um, had some struggles in my very recent past and my Christianity background hasn't held up to the standards that I needed it to. And so um, Islam is everything I need right now and for the rest of my future. So thank you. And you got a big family here and I'm the head of the family, so never hesitate to, to call anybody for anything. Everybody is willing to help you here, okay? Thank you so much. And we are all, all here to giving in, okay? Thank you very much for witnessing that, okay? I begin in the name of Allah, most compassionate, most merciful. Allah's peace and blessing be upon all his prophets, from Prophet Adam <coughs> to Noah to Ibrahim, Moses and Jesus. And we are starting a bit late because I'm still waiting for a few speakers. Uh, why, why did we meet here today? Very simple thing. If you come to my class, there is no preaching in the class. I have made it a rule that nobody will pass a book to anybody. And I have told them not to pass any cassette to anybody. Just give their smile and tell them what they need, that's all. Because I trust all of you to be intelligent. And uh, if you have any question, you can ask me. The only thing that we offer here is love. What it means now, Quran says, those who are believers love for the sake of Allah. And love for the sake of Allah is one way love, it's more pure love, it's more sincere love. And when somebody comes to my class, a lot of person took shahada, they witnessed, they said only one thing when we came to the class, we found the love in the class. So the only thing I can offer to you, the class can offer you the love for the sake of Allah. No preaching and no passing of the books and no tapes at all. If you have a question, you ask us. The second thing is that, uh, that uh, the journey starts with my dinner at home and there we break the ice to find who you, you, who you are. <coughs> First of all, I thank Allah to have given me this chance to be part of this class for the last 21 years. This is blessing of Allah upon me. After thanking Allah, I will have to thank my wife. For the last 21 years, Aliyah Kazi did not <coughs> have any engagement except coming to this class every Sunday, making preparation for the refreshment. And, um, but, you know, we really don't know where we are. I feel that story applies to everyone. Everyone has a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we got to kind of figure out where we are and are we under the thumb of the Egyptians? Are we in the desert? Um, and sort of work on our relationship where we can eventually make it to the promised land. Here and, and in, in Jemna. But uh, I hope this encourages people. I, I really want people to... If any of you take anything out of this message of me, uh, if you can get anything from this, then it would be to, to serve mankind and to improve yourself and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make the journey easy for us and that you have brought blessing to all of us. I'm going to call a person who will read first Quran and then he will tell you a story of becoming Muslim that is the most unique that I've heard in my life and then that's Brother Rick is here. And then just be very, I don't, you don't have to be too modest, you just be, I, I have never heard a story for a person to be Muslim like that in my life. Read the Quran first, okay, then listen to this, this Quran, mashallah.
Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yasin. Vel Kur'anil Hakim. İnneke leminel mursalin. Ala siratim mustaqim. Tenzilel azizir rahim. لِتُنْذِرَ قَوْمَ مَا أُنْذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّ جَعَلْنَا فِي أَغْنَاكِهِمْ أَغْلَالًا فَهِيَ إِلَىٰ الْأَذْقَانِ فَهُمْ مُكْمَهُونَ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبَسِرُونَ وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ İnnemâ tundirû minnâ tebâ zikrâ ve khâşiyâ rahmâna bil gâybâ fâbâşirhû bi mâğfirretim ve ecrin kerîm İnnâ nâhnu nuhyil mâutâ ve naktubû mâ keddemû ve athârahum وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Kind of in, in, in two parts, so I guess you could say. When I grew up as a as a teenager growing up, um, I was very much into science, and I thought science was the way to find the truth. So I, I was pretty much considered myself an atheist. I think through as as, as a teenager, but um, when I was in college in in Chicago, freshman year in college, I had. Um, Allah just gave me this like unbelievable experience one night in the springtime, almost the end of uh, freshman year. Um, uh, my dorm was on the lake shore in Chicago, uh, on Lake Michigan, and a storm had just passed over the city, like big storm clouds, and then the, it started raining out over the Lake Michigan, and like a few miles out, and you couldn't hear anything, but you could see like lightning, you couldn't hear the thunder, but you could... Taking care of the cleaning. <coughs> not a single day, not a single week goes in our life when Alia will not prepare any dish for any person. And without her support, it was not possible for me to have done the job. And I pray to Allah that at least you can get a wife like Alia, or better than that. I didn't order. Okay, we will begin our program by the recitation of Quran. Brother Ross will read the recitation of Quran, and then every one of you <coughs> will listen to their story that how did they jump the fence and what they found after jumping the fence. So, Brother Ross, come here and start reading the Fatiha and begin the program. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين إذن السرّات المستقيم سرّات الذين نمت عليهم ويل مكتوب عليهم وربطين آمين أيها الفنيف روس أيها I'm doing this for Dr. Kazi, and I hope it pleases Allah at the same time. Um, I uh, I converted 
I'd like to start off saying, in the name of Allah, um, most gracious, most merciful. But I converted uh, last December to Islam, and my journey began, I guess, about three years ago. And uh, in a nutshell, I went through some situations that were that kind of changed my life physically and, and changed my life mentally through work and through um, some accidents, some car wrecks I had. So after I realized that I would die eventually, uh, I started studying a lot and I started working a lot. And I, I, I basically concentrated most of my time working and studying. And I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelations and and after I read it, I had a concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His oneness and how that oneness sort of changed in the New Testament from after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how that oneness sort of changed. And I was convinced of, uh, of that oneness. And I went to a Catholic teacher and the Catholic teacher told me I was, I was nuts. And I needed, to re I needed to study some more. So I studied some more and I st almost started joining the Catholic Church. And I, I realized that uh, at some point there, Allah led me to read his book. And I, when I read the book, it did feel like the Last Testament. So I, I, I did convert. And it's been a long journey and I'm happy to be here, to be honest. And, and the improvements I've made, and I feel in my personality, I think I'm more can attest to that, that it, the, the religion does work, and it's simple, objective. They're ob almost like objective miracles, you could call them. The Quran is an objective miracle. And it's nice. It's nice to have healing. It's nice to be able to be a part of a community that you have support. And I'm very, I'm very thankful. Um, there is one other thing I wanted to mention and that is I felt like the story you hear of the of the Israelis coming out of out of uh, Egypt and into the desert and into the promised land I feel like that story is you can see that through history and you can see that through biographies that same story and it, the story might repeat and we never really know where we are in that in that, you know, I kind of feel like I'm in the desert. Uh, 